Hello and welcome to my video today. My name is Corey Heisey and today I'm going to go over the update, firmware update of the Bamboo Labs. I did a video recently on the my Bamboo A1 printer and relatively all good things and uh, from my experience and I got a comment saying, oh, uh, maybe, maybe talk about the new update that um, isn't so customer orientated and um, so I started doing a little more research and and so I found this there's a lot of of course videos and um, read a post and from the community aren't happy about this um, launching first X series with P and A series updates plan for the future so versus the initial the X series and I, mean, I think I saw this as well before I like, was like, oh, okay, yeah, of course, firmware. Um, and the biggest thing, you know, I don't really need to um, recap everything, but I think the biggest problem that people are having is that you can't use a third-party slicer like, I guess, Orca slicer is pretty common. Um, it has more capabilities uh, for, for, I assume... When people are using the printers for heavier manufacturing, you know, print um, print service, print farm, or, or whatever you want. You can make your own slicer and you should be able to use it. Or Cura, I used to use Cura, Cura slicer with the uh, um, uh, Creality Ender. So far, I've been just using the, the Bamboo Studio and it works for me. Uh, but I've heard reviews saying that it's a bit finicky and it's not the best. And yeah, of course, you shouldn't need to have to use their uh, software and and the solution here they says oh if you want to use another one you have to install bamboo connect and uh, go through this connecting software which is still theirs um, and to me the first thing i and, and their whole trying to be security uh, against hacks uh, hackers and uh, malicious attacks but my um, initial thought is yeah it's like you're um, of course, these companies can and do collect data on, you know, of course, the social media or your phones or Google, even Google. I mean, like they know where you go and they give you um, updates. Oh, you traveled, whatever. There's so many kilometers or target ads. It's, it's okay. Or like it's that we know of it. You can opt in and out of these things, try to. But the the fright, the fear or the, that I think of in the first comes to this um, news is that they can see everything you can you print they can see your camera if you're having it if it's on and you're using it to have remote um, monitoring of the of the print you know that's on then of course okay you can you know cover your camera if you're not using it for, for against that stuff but um, um, that's the first thing that I um, comes to my mind for for that's a bit spooky. But, I mean, maybe they could already do that, you know, so, but, yeah. Uh, I haven't, I haven't turned it on since I uh, last used it, and I think that was before any updates. And I guess it's for the X-Series. And I honestly haven't even updated the Bamboo Lab Studio in a long time. I just, whatever, next, next, because it's kind of a pain. It's always the same for this, like, flicing software, you know. Um, and... Yeah, yeah, of course. <clears throat> the, the, also, the funny things. Oh, you, uh, you don't want to do the agree to the terms. You can use the SD card and or MQTT and Home Assistant. But I actually heard other things. People saying they had problems with using Home Assistant uh, with the new updates. So, but I think um, there's likely more news to come from this. A lot of backlash from the community. A lot of um, um, def uh, um, backtracking and trying to defend themselves from Bamboo Labs, but um, the the yeah, reason I was studying a little up on open source hardware and it seems to be a lacking uh, area. Like they have sometimes open source architectures. I was looking up like Risk Five for um, um, processing architectures. And, um, but the actual hardware seems to be pretty not open source. 
in general. I mean, it makes sense because you have to spend the time and the money and everything to manufacture these uh, units, and you can't have too much open source, or you can't make profit from having, you know, like the designs and the actual hardware open source. But it'd be nice to have. I have. It was, so this got me is thinking. Okay, well, it'd be nice to have more open source hardware, not just like the firmware. You know, of course, there's tons of open source software, uh, and there's some open source like firmware or um, low level softwares. Um, but it'd be nice to have more open source. Uh, hardware uh, for things like printing, for things like um, uh, GPUs, for, for for any of those sort of processors that are traditionally more closed source. Um, and yeah, and I guess the that's the battle with uh, a company like Bamboo Labs that with the 3D printing space, which the 3D printing space has a lot of open source community, lots of open source um, um, support and you know you share your prints it's just like an open source sort of makers industry computer uh, community so I understand that there's this you know fight between the company that wants to have the closed source and the people that want to use it and, and share these things so um, so we'll see how the future future entails with this and uh, a lot of people I've was doing research. Say, um, maybe they'll finish. They'll still use it, their existing one, but they're not going to buy another one. They're not going to um, um, recommend it to other people. So, especially the future, the future updates or the. I guess that's another thing is they can update it like this, then they can update it like they say. People make it a brick and won't, won't be able to turn on, and they can do anything, which. I could see not wanting to support a company in general for those sorts of things. Um, but yeah, I guess keep the printer if it works and don't buy another one. But um, yeah, so we'll see how it goes. See how these, these the future entails on this. So yeah. Well, thanks for watching. And until next time, and subscribe and like and bye-bye. Bye for now.